Hey, welcome to Pie Tales. I'm your host, Lloyd, and today I got a special guest as usual. We got Tyler Davis in the building. Tyler, that's your camera right there. Hey, hey but hey, you know, hey. you can <laughs> talk, hey, <little> <laughs> speak wherever you want to speak <laughs> to me through the camera, whatever, whatever right. you want to do. How y'all doing, y'all? Hee hee. Talking to me. <laughs> Good job, Lloyd. You're doing numbers, baby. <laughs> you want to reference that for the uh, people that might not Larry know June, you know, the king of P out here. Not not that stuff. Uh, what's his name? Gunner, what's his name? This new young. Well, you know. Yeah. So uh, today we have peach cobbler and requested requested by Tyler. Vanilla ice cream, you know, provided by me because I can't true I can't really can't really eat peach cobbler without ice cream because of the texture. I don't know. It's just something weird about it. Yeah, it's like a crackhead with no crack, you know. You heard it first from uh, Tyler. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that should get though. Yeah, so Tyler, you've already kind of taken some bites. Tell the people, you know, how this peach cobbler is uh, hidden. Okay, let's see. The ice cream, I like my ice cream a little melted, mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, texture's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of give me like a little jello look at first you look at it. Yeah, yeah. But definitely, I definitely guess like, hidden. It is heavily breaded, so. I can't even taste that part. Like kind of like you can chew it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Good Lord. Well, while well, we you take a few bites, I just want to mention this is the first show in the new studio. Mm. Clap it up, make some noise for that. Yeah, we, we're in a new studio. Um, and as usual, excited for you know this guest today. Yeah. I feel like it's been. You know, I've been shooting this for a year now. Long time coming. Yeah, so it's been it's been a year. You know, he's definitely one of the guests that I definitely wanted on the show, as many others. But you know, I'm excited to have you here today. You know, coming from Norfolk. Yeah, no, it's Norfolk. 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 Virginia. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> horrible out there. Yeah, so you know, episode title of this episode is gonna be uh, probably "Good Job, Tyler." <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Once again, Larry June uh, references. Um, so yeah, we always start to show off with, um, well, well, first of all, Tyler, like, how are you? What are you doing these days? What's going on? Uh, shit, man. I'm living life right now. We love uh, to see it. Right now, what I'm doing, I'm in the Navy. So mm -hmm. I'm, you know, sold my soul to government for about six years. Your whole we'll take, soul? Nah, it's just part of my soul. Okay. It was for four okay. years, and then I'm extend for another two years to get paid, you know? Okay. Figure why not, you know, might as well get some money out of them. Yeah. And also with that, I'm a father now, father and husband, so. Congrats, congrats. You know, father, fatherhood is really different. It's like, I see how my father felt. Starting to understand some things? What? <laughs> I understand a lot of things. I got to understand, whew, I understand why he didn't want to deal with my mama sometimes. Good Lord. Have mercy. I know, right? Yep. Shit, you start to think, oh, my dad ain't love me. But really, my food is just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's great, though. My son, he cool. He just turned two the other day, so. Hey, happy we, birthday. We went and celebrate that. Shoot, toast, cheers to. Cheers to two. To two. And many more to come. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So, next thing we do, we'd like to talk about where we met. Oh, um, that's gonna be funny. Yeah, no, nah, this is Pie Tales, so you know we're supposed to tell some stories, really give the people a, a glimpse of you know my life, but with the people that come on the show. So Tyler, do you remember the first day you met me? Do you remember around the time you met? Like I, I actually probably can remember the day, every detail. It was seventh grade, <laughs> and we were at Barry Miller Junior High. I was in the middle of taking a practice tax test or star test for no tax test. Practice taxes. Taxes. Probably around that time. And it was a homeroom with Jalen, Jamal, Kennedy, Damian, and I, what was that basketball coach name? Uh, or the football coach? Seventh grade. I forgot his name. Basketball or and football? Yeah, he coached seventh grade A. The one who got caught looking at porn. Well, I don't know if you should say his name now, but yeah, so yeah. okay, we was in the coach. We met in that class, <laughs> and I came in there with a, a, a big black coat. And you were sitting right there next to Damien. And the first thing I saw was Jalen Jamal. And I, oh, I got into it with these motherfuckers like first day. And that's when we first met. And then we became cool 
eighth grade, that's we came really cool. We yeah. sat at the same lunch table. And hey, that was some memories right there. Oh, there was memories, yeah. St- oh, uh, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick and Darius, that was hilarious. Like, that was probably one of the funniest moments we had at lunch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, there was another incident with Cameron. I remember he chased someone I won't mention. That oh, was, yeah, that, but, yeah. <laughs> but besides uh, people getting yeah. into it, there was just there was a lot of freestyles. There was a lot of a lot of jokes being cracked. There were a lot of jokes being cracked. You know, that's that's thirteen years old, so you can only imagine. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was that was boof. <laughs> that was funny, man. That was, that was a lot. That was a lot. And that was a like transition to me because I like switched basically like I literally switched lunch tables around yeah. the time that you came. And that's when you was going from your transition from your hair to the bald head phase. No, man. no, no. That was a little bit later, but not. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Ball, ball was fifteen. Oh was yeah. 15. But I mean, things are happening to lead up to get to there. Sure, <laughs> we we can say that. But uh, no, no, no. no. All right. So look, seventh grade, eighth grade. That's when we meet football. I mean, yeah. we play football. Yeah, that's, that was the thing. Um. The ninth grade. Ninth grade. Yeah, I mean, we were pretty solidified. Just <laughs> homies. <laughs> I yeah, guess ninth grade. Oh. So, football. I mean, yeah, just talk about talk about school a little bit. How was how was high school? How was high school, man. If I could redo high school again with the stuff I know now, I definitely would not go to Dawson. Dawson specifically, or like yeah, why? I would go to Dawson. My like, father would have went to like uh, Katie Manville. Or hell, even in private school. Because of like what aspect? Uh, just like the sport, sports aspect, like mm-hmm. the cultural environment. Cause I ain't gonna lie, our freshman and sophomore year, that was the last chance we ever had to win a state title. Because like the players we had leading us really ain't cared. The kind of cuss or no? No, oh, they yeah, really yeah, don't give a fuck. So like, <laughs> they had a bond where like, they really ain't like the coaching staff, but they they knew they had to get their shit done. And then, so yours are definitely for athletic reasons. You would like, yeah, have much rather go into a different school. What well, different school? Academics wise, I really felt like Dawson helped me though because okay, I know my freshman year, boy, I was not, I was not in those books at all. I did not care. I was mainly focused on girls and playing football. Yeah, and then I would say Miss Farinacci, also known as Miss Brady now, my uh, government teacher. Oh yeah, she. Was amazing, man. Shout out to her. Can we have that class together, right? Me, you, Nala. Brett? Nah, I didn't have the class with y'all, but I definitely had. I definitely had her class, and I definitely remember y'all's relationship. Yeah, yeah. That, she, she was dope. She was one of them teachers that was like real, and she like she taught us obviously, but she was real too. Like, I mean, she was really high ISS, but it wasn't her fault. Though, but <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't her fault, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. That conversation we had in our class definitely made it to Miss Hobbs' class, and yeah. Yeah, I kind of remember some things around that time. What? Okay, honestly, so this show is all about you know introspection, um, looking back, and then like uh, just like realizing what happened to get to this point. And I guess I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I know I've seen a lot of growth and development in mm-hmm. your character, right? Yeah. Since since the day I met you, from 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 now, right? A lot of growth. Trust Would me. you? Would you say that you, if you could go talk to yourself now, maybe like around high school, could you have brought yourself out of that mindset or where, or were you in like a space that was just like too deep? Were you just kind of like in a space that kind of just like molded kind of like your mindset and it probably wouldn't be changeable no matter what anybody said? I'm not saying he was yeah. a bad person. It sounds like I'm saying he was just no, a terrible individual. I ain't gonna lie. I was a terrible individual. <laughs> I really was. But... All right, so yeah, what, 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 I would say this. I mean, I was a terrible individual at some point. Don't say terrible. Okay, no, well, I don't, I don't know. No, no, wait, I can't do that. You know you better than I know. Yeah, whatever he say is true. So keep going. As I was like, from I say, fifteen to about maybe seventeen. No, I said, I ain't gonna say fifteen. From nine to fifteen, I was a menace to society. Like. You can tell me nothing. I almost fought my dad with a football helmet in Little League. Okay. Uh, what else? I didn't care. Like, my language was like a sailor. I cussed every three words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't care about school. All I cared about was sports. And I feel like I had to grow up fast because of the circumstances I had growing up. But then as I got 
older and I started to experience things, I started to mellow out. Cause like, I ain't gonna lie, when I was 17, I started getting mad. Actually, no, take that back a lot. Around. Take your time, man. Figure it out. <laughs> it was after football season, our senior year, I stopped getting mad. That's why, I, that's why I just say, you know what, fuck it, it is what it is. At this point, it's gonna happen. Yeah. I think this thing that, the straw that broke the camel's back was like, we played against Doby that uh, Saturday morning. Good Lord. I specifically remember we had them breakfast tacos. Oh, them hoes. They were good, though. That was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> they were good. I don't care. I'll never forget ridiculous. that. I hate it. For some reason, I hated having a Saturday morning game at 10. Why the hell did we play at 10 in the morning? It was dumb early and we had breakfast tacos. I want y'all to keep remembering we had breakfast tacos. We had to be at the field house at 5.45, I believe. And we left for Dolby around like 7.30, 8-ish. Yeah. And I'm like, who the hell scheduled a game at 10? <laughs> Wait, why did they do that? Who did that? <laughs> why did this, were, they, were we trying to beat the heat? Cause I don't know. That who cares? I mean, it's Texas. I feel like everything about that day was off. We didn't have the band. Everything there. felt off about that day. I remember that. We didn't have the majorettes there. Hell, it just felt like we was at a, a JV or freshman football game. I was like, damn, like ain't no band playing while we come yeah. up the tunnel. Then it's like it's somewhat humid, and it's, it was October. It's Halloween weekend too. Yeah. So it yeah. just felt like nobody's mind was in the right spot. I'm not gonna lie. To Hell no. And so course, and it definitely reflect reflected on the field. I'm not saying that said yeah. team was should you know we should have definitely just like you know it nah. should have went the other way. But we what I'm saying is we definitely should have. It could have went the other way, and it just never seemed like it was. We should have beat the shot. It just wouldn't. It would just. We lost that game. So you saying? Touchdown. But okay. But back on track. Like after that Doby game, you said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What happened was I got into it on the field with uh, John and Dylan. So these are people that are on our team on on yeah. defense. We both were defensive line, and that's also something that you should know. I was second string. Came basically would come out to Tyler and maybe Joe, Jordan, who else was on the on the line at the time. So Tyler, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm playing play this whole situation out. <laughs> the game about to end. It's like maybe 30 seconds left. They have the ball because we can't do shit on offense. They was like, we're going to take a knee. Like, all right, whatever. So they take a knee. The referee say, you know, go to sideline, game over. I'm listening at this point. I'm pissed off. I'm like, yeah, we lost to Doby. I'm listening to the referee. I'm walking to the sideline. like, why the hell are you walking away? I'm like, man, he just said the game over. You know, so I'm getting a shovel match with, like, two of my teammates. And then Coach Allison. That was the second time I disrespected him. Because the first time I did it was my freshman year. Yeah. And I didn't do it until my senior year. And I was like, man, fuck this shit. I threw my helmet down. I ain't give a fuck. And then they was like, oh, you off the team. I was like, oh, fuck it. I don't care. That was like one of the last games. Well, I mean, I guess yeah, it was we, before we, playoffs. But. We had to win two more games to even make the playoffs, mm -hmm. which was fucking sad because we shouldn't have been in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so we get back to the schoolhouse. And me and Coach Wells. We sit down, have a conversation outside. And I'm like, on the bus ride back, I overheard the younger guy. So I like, oh, we got a Halloween party coming up tonight. We're going to this and that. I'm just thinking in my head, like. Like, boys are talking about that after the game we just lost. After we just lost to Kobe. <laughs> like, yeah. a team we should have beat by three touchdowns. It's like, oh, we're going to a Halloween party. About to be hella hoes. I'm about to get what's up, so whoop whoop. I'm just listening to the back of the bus. Like, these motherfuckers really talking about going to a Halloween party. And it's my senior year. This might be my last time playing. And y'all out here talking about Halloween party. So that shit just really ticked me off. Yeah. So as soon as I got off the bus, Coach Wells points this out. We talked about it. I told him what happened. Hey, those are characteristics of a leader. He's like, you want the young guys, you know, seeing I like this? And I had to tell him, I'm like, I can't control what they think or say. Yeah. But I'm going to try to control what I think you say. And right now, this ain't it. I, t I told him, I was like, we ain't going to make it past the first round if we do go to playoffs. So with this mindset, I said, we're going to make it past the first round. Yeah. So he's like, you know what, Tyler? I'm going to think about it. I want you to think about it. Come back and see me Monday. Sunday come around. They were still saying, like, you off the team. Uh, they said I was off the team, but I, really, I knew I was off the team. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of other stuff that should have been off the team way before this. Nah. Probably should have never made the team senior season. Okay. But, so Monday come around, they was like, we're going to suspend you for the game. I was like, 
All right, cool. I mean, my boy Lloyd can shine. I was like, yes, I was sir. not yes, tripping. Yes, second stream. I was like, there's like Lloyd gonna start. I was like, all right. And my head was kind of pissed. I got suspended. I was like, fuck it, my boy Lloyd about to go here. So the whole week, I was like, Lloyd, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. I did not care about playing. We were playing what? Uh, Pasadena? Yeah, we played Pasadena. I couldn't tell you. I can, all I can do is agree. Well, yeah, we yeah. played Pasadena. No, it wasn't Pasadena. It was. Damn, who was it that we played? It was somebody trash as hell, too. It was one of the Pasadena schools. But we played and I was like, hey, Lloyd, you got to do this, you got to do that. And that whole week, Coach Allison, he was just watching me from afar. I didn't interact with none of my coaches that week, not even my position coach. And so I was like, hey, Lloyd, make sure you do this. Jordan, you do this. I got that. I was stretching people out. I was <laughs> it like, turned into coach. <laughs> I turned into an assistant coach at that point. <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of I remember seeing the shift. You were just kind of like, yeah. So at that point, Coach, uh, coach Allison put me into the office. He's like, hey. I see what you've been doing, man. I like it, you know. Uh, I'm not going to suspend you for the game. I'm just going to suspend you for the, uh, the first half. Oh, okay. I was like, all right. All right. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> and so the half actually turned to a quarter because the day of the game, I was doing warm-ups. And I was, again, I was helping other people. We had uh, two new long snappers. I was teaching them how to do it. Yeah, hey, man, you know what? I'm going to suspend you for a quarter. I was like, all right. And... I only played for a quarter after that. I played the second quarter, and after that, I was done. Cause you got most of the reps. I was, I was really happy because you bought out that game. Yeah. <laughs> you. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what you, I do. You, Shamar. When I, when I get my chance. Oh, man. Jesus. Yeah. You, Shamar, and uh, Richard. Y'all bought out that game. That shit was crazy. One thing I got to say is I wish that... Uh, I, don't even, I don't even too much want to get into it. But, yeah, no. Nah, it was... I had a hate love relationship with football, but it was definitely great to play. Like when I play, when I did get in or when I could play practice, I always went hard. I mean, it wasn't, oh yeah, you did. I, I mean, I, I definitely did. I always want, I want to be as best as I could, but <clears throat> dealing with the stuff that I was dealing with because I was injured playing honestly the whole last year. Honestly, we play positions we should never been playing. That is place. also a, a thing, yeah, because that's how I got injured. <laughs> but um, we one ninety, I barely broke. I remember I broke two hundred. I was happy as hell. Yeah, I wasn't breaking two hundred. Like we were the smallest dudes on the defensive line, like one ninety, 190, one ninety five, yeah, definitely two hundred. Like we had people who were like two sixty five. I was going up against. Uh, I hate. I don't like name dropping, but let's just say I was going up against dudes that was benching like two, three times my weight. <laughs> at practice yeah. so that was bad so yeah nah. but yeah no nah, so so you would say after that ended uh you you saw the shift so then after the shift it was kind of like at that point i was like you know what the universe can let whatever happen, happen. yeah you gotta just take your l's how you take your wins you know yeah but you kept playing football went to mcmurray and yeah i went there for McMurray, a year played some football and that, they almost relapsed there Almost relaxed. And I was like, no, I got to leave. <laughs> so I left the football. You felt the mentality coming back? Like, it's not even the mentality. It's like, once I get told bullshit and I see bullshit, I try not to deal with it. Yeah. Because, like, when I first went on my visit there, they were Division Two program. And I didn't know where they decided they were going to switch to Division Three. I was like, what the hell? So with that, Division Three don't get athletic scholarships. So they uh gave me like a dean scholarship or whatever. Okay. But they ain't cover that. We ain't cover a decent amount, but I still have to pay like maybe ten to thirteen out of pocket. Yeah. I was, I was about like, to say it's something, but no, nah, I guess not. Yeah. If you might <laughs> don't know, McMurray is a private Methodist university in Avalon, Texas. Uh, okay. If they hit you up for football or any sports, do not, do not. I repeat, do not go there. What I should have listened to Big Monday. He, he told me not to go. I should have listened. But you did. So you went yeah. there. I went to McMurray. And then uh, I kind of redshirted. Like, not redshirt really, but kind of redshirted. So, like, I didn't travel for away games, but for the home games, I carried a clipboard. Pretty much, like, a sense coaching. Okay. And that got me in the, like, made me want to coach. Like, I was like, damn, I can do this. Like, I'm carry a clipboard right now, plays, talking to players, whoop, whoop. I was like, yeah, I you wouldn't be a bad coach, like, no, nah. yeah, no. My original dream was to be a coach. Mm -hmm. Like, I was gonna coach at Riller Ridge, probably be the youngest black head coach, and just change the culture there and bring it back to what it used to be. Why Willow Ridge specifically? Uh, one, people don't know I'm from Mo City, you know, Broadway, Texas stand up. Um, but my dad 
went to Willow, she played there. And I can remember growing up as a kid, he always said, oh yeah, back at the Ridge, you know, we, we had that motherfucker rocking. Ah, yeah. ah. So he was always telling me the stories about playing there and then how they would play against Westfield, Yates, Converse, Judson. They go to the Astrodome, they go to Spring, B Westfield. They go to Austin, beat on Westlake. I was like, damn, that's dope. Yeah. They had all these like great athletes. Like if you walk in Rivers weight room now, you see all the players who signed D one or to any school, like they got their pictures around the weight room so they can show the younger generation like, hey, yeah, yeah you, you can, can go be somewhere. here too. You can definitely go somewhere, yeah. I want to go there because one it's also like in the middle of the hood and it's like a rich school, like it is rich on history. Yeah. Like they the only high school in the Houston area or in Texas at that fact that perform in the uh, Rose Bowl parade. Really? People don't know that. They put on the Rose Bowl Parade. And I was like, that's kind of dope. And they had, like I said, a lot of great athletes come out of there. Thurman Thompson, my dad. They had a lot of people. So that's just like a school that you could see yourself, you know, getting in with yeah. the culture and definitely like helping out in whatever way you possibly could. Just checking these cameras, making yeah, sure we Yeah, most could. definitely. Because, you know, I also want to get back to the black community and help oh, out no, the kids sure. who look like me who might not have the same upbringing as me, but try to put them in different, like, different positions in life. Because everyone thinks, like, oh, if I play football, I got to go D1, I got to go to SEC, Power 5. Yeah. That's not the case. Because it don't matter if you go Division One, Division One AA, D2, D3, NAIA, or JUCO. Not everybody gets to say they play football at the next level. Yeah, that's a good point. And so, like, if I was go there, I would say this, I would model my coaching way after Coach Carter. It sounds kind of cheesy. But like, the, the whole thing about him having players make it 2.3 GPA just so they, SAT scores would be lower. I was like, it makes sense because now you gotta have a 2.5. So if I was a coach, I was like, no, nah, you need 3.0. So your score, you can make like what, maybe a non something mm -hmm. and be eligible. And I don't care if you go D1, junior college, I want you to get out of Houston. Yeah. See the world outside of Houston or Texas. Okay, it's way bigger than what you think it is. Yeah. Hmm. All right. I definitely learned some stuff about you there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing, obviously. Um, that's what you're here to do. I'm glad you're doing it. Uh, so I was going to take you through the timeline of your life, but can you think about anything? I mean, we could still do that. But, yeah. I mean, how you feeling? How you feel? I guess. I'm feeling good, man. Yeah. Feeling good, feeling good. You see, we destroyed oh, yeah, this piece of Y'all need to see this. Yeah, it, this is this <laughs> banging. I was like, like, hey, you want all this? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh, it seems like I a lot. I piece of in a minute because Norfolk, they don't have no good soul food out there. Oh, that's upsetting. No good southern food. That is upsetting. Man, you get what you get. Like, the Mexican food up there is trash. You know, I hear you get like the, we go to a Mexican restaurant, you get the red sauce and the green sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you get, they give you some like Walmart red looking sauce and then they give you like some white ranch looking dip. No, bro, look, stop talking about like, it. Like, what is this? It's, it's making me sad. And then when you ask for guacamole, <laughs> they charge you for guacamole. I'm like, bro, guacamole used to come with every fajita meal, yeah, yeah, yeah. quesadilla. Yeah. Like, that's trash. But the other thing I would say is margaritas be hidden sometimes. So you got a spot with the margaritas. Yeah, it's one about my house that's exquisite. So shoot. Um, so yeah, like I said, no Tyler since high school. Um, relationship kept going through college. Yeah. I don't know how it did, but it did. <laughs> I think because the friend group we had, like. Yeah, I mean, we definitely. I feel like everybody, like, I had Shamar, Kevo, uh, Eric, Marcellus, you had Steven, uh, Nick. Yeah. Uh, who else I'm missing? I missed a couple of people. CJ. CJ, yeah. Landon. Landon. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, everybody he just said I definitely knew. It was. And I think everybody intertwined. Oh, DeAndre. DeAndre too, yeah. Yeah, no, DeAndre. I always see DeAndre. <laughs> DeAndre kind of knew DeAndre everybody. DeAndre is a bridge, yeah. Hell, DeAndre. No, Cameron. Right. Yo, Cameron, definitely Cam. But DeAndre, I ain't gonna lie, DeAndre, I think his, his bullshit. No, it was actually Steven's fault. Steven's Wait, bullshit. <laughs> he solidified our, our friendship that night at the ranch party. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, we kept up being cool. I remember, though, specifically reaching out to Tyler. Like, we definitely stayed in contact, even without yeah. those outside people. But, yeah, nah. So, 
first, honestly, this was one of my, so this is going into like, our, this is probably our sophomore year, going, or that or going into our sophomore year of college, right? Yeah. This is when I first started to like, get into like nightlife, you know, club life, oh, yeah. going out. So, you know, this is where Tyler comes in <laughs> to assist with that. I was already kind of a little bit LSU. Because that time like, I was at St. Houston at that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we was in Houston this time, so. Um, so we used to go to Carrington sometimes, parking lot pimp. That was a thing. Chachos. <laughs> Poe Burger. <laughs> I got yeah. on the snap, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that, I mean, one of the first big parties, I guess, outside of a club we went with Tyler. And, you know, shout out the boy Cam got us into it free. Thank God. Yeah, we I know. Hated. How he, he be getting everybody he was just, free. They, they was with, drove through. Bro, <laughs> Cam, we had some great parties because, I ain't gonna lie, we had that. Yes. No, that was a summer going into our sophomore year. Yeah, boy. Because then we had homecoming. Yeah, that's saying Houston. That yeah. was a that was fun. That was that was a good time. That was, yeah, and I wasn't even with y'all for all of it, so I know y'all had way more Man, going on. So. That was entertaining. Yeah, nah. But me and London came from Baton Rouge to uh, to London. He drove. He drove that morning. I think I had something to do, so I came like after him. But yeah, nah. Yeah, that yeah, nah. was crazy. That was that. That's, we that had was people fun. sleeping in the kitchen. Man. I, <laughs> oh, that, we had I had hardwood floors, Bro. and we had people. It was a two bedroom. My roommate at the time he was like kind of dirty, so like I made sure the uh, common area was clean. My room was clean. His restroom I made sure it was clean, but like everything else I ain't touch his bed. Cause I don't know what he be doing over there. And so we it was me, you. Well, the first time it was me, London, my cousin Rashawn, and his two homeboys. So that's five. And then we had like one more other person. I forgot who was it. Oh, Caleb. Yeah. yeah Caleb. But he wasn't yeah. staying with us that night. No. He was at some girl house. And then her dude came back in town that oh, same and, morning. And, and, and I'll share that story for <laughs> Caleb to tell. But yeah, no. Nah, hey, no, nah, I'm going to tell you because that was hilarious. We had to go I get him. I remember him. I guess. That was hilarious. You had to go get that, man? Yeah, what? <laughs> I just remember that second night. It, it was at least I thought it was like ten of us okay, <laughs> it, throughout that whole like little space. Okay, yeah, we went to my cousin. They had like a little uh, floor party at their apartments. That shit was crazy. That was that was the craziest thing I've seen. And like I think in college, the coolest, craziest thing I've seen in college. All four apartments on the same floor had a party in each. And we ain't talking about small apartments. We talking no, about it was big, packed out. Like whole floor, second floor. That's because we got my cousin Candice. Shout out to Candice. Her, her friends Mariah, my homegirl Adriana, Malik, and they neighbors, they always like, hey, for homecoming. Cause it was a Sigma party. And uh, London had on his, uh, <laughs> yeah, on his blue baseball jersey. And so the U of A Sigma thought he was one of them. I was like, dog, what? So we got, we got that for free. Then Caleb, somehow he skipped a line. But his, like, he skipped the line and he got him for free with everybody, so he snuck everybody in. But that was dope. But you missed Magic City. Magic City was a, was a good I one. did. I was there for that second night. And what was cool about that second night was, remember, we was all going to whatever place after the big party. And yeah. then I had called my people. This was so rare. I called my people from Pearland, I, like Steven and them. Oh, yeah. And Steven DeAndre, I think. It was Steve DeAndre because Cam was already there. Yeah, Cam was already there. So. Steve DeAndre and Nick. Nick. Yeah, I hit them. I was like, yeah, we had Sam. And they literally hopped in the car and drove. This And, and I don't know. Oh, if, y'all don't know these people. They don't drive to Houston to come see me. They drove. <laughs> drove <laughs> to, to Huntsville. So we were just, we was very deep. And very deep. construction, too. Like, very deep that night. But yeah. Cause, yeah, we clearly got the. Uh, the fucking floor party for like a good two hours. I ain't like I almost fell asleep. Yeah, that's no, how drunk I was. I fell asleep on the uh, couch. Yeah, that no, was different. And then we got in Bentley. Bentley's my uh, old Ford, Ford Explorer. You know, great memories. Sometimes he didn't want to start up. Yeah, it was. I remember it having, a, having to whip that that night. That was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, I, I think Lloyd, you had to drive that night, right? I did drive that yeah. night. Yes. Lloyd drove that night. <laughs> Yeah, I think you left the you left the party early for something. No, like I so I was just outside chilling with one of the other dudes that didn't get in because yeah. I, I that whole day I was outside like with my because my that's my dad's school so we was on the field like oh yeah football, but I was just tired. Game was lit too. I remember I remember bro, we was about to get in the car to go and they was complaining. It was like 
no, the, the girls, we got to go get the girls. We got to go talk to oh, the girls. Oh, yeah. I, said, I turned off the car. I said, bro, everybody need to come back with five numbers apiece. Go <laughs> hurry up. That was crazy. My homegirl, she, my homegirl Shakia, she had like a group of friends. So and so I was like, and they put up next to me. We were like, hey, Shakia, what's your friend's name? And she's like, boy, what? I said, like, what's your friend's name? And I got, I got friends trying to put them on. She's like, boy, bye, please. I'm like, come on, Shakia, don't like that. And I remember they skirted off and drove. But I ain't gonna lie, what's crazy, you left. And every time you leave, Lloyd, something happens. You, when you went outside, there was a fight that happened inside. Really? It was two females fighting. I was like, and they were playing Kirk Franklin while they were fighting. Good God. In the name of the Lord? Yeah, man. They were playing Stomp. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they were playing Stomp. I remember they turned the lights on. I was like, they damn. They got the wrong message. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's wild. Yeah. I guess, yeah, nah, they, I do be, okay. Um, so I guess when Lloyd leaves, you should, you might want to leave. Yeah, when Lloyd leaves, <laughs> you should leave. It was crazy. Even a ranch party, I forgot you. Yeah, we don't talk about that a lot, but let's just say there might have been some shots there, and let's just say I might have left everyone. <laughs> let's just say I might have ran into somebody with yeah. that thing, and I, let's just say I still made it <laughs> nope. to the car. <laughs> still made it to the car. No, bro. <laughs> with them jogging up to us. I said, Kinda forget, cause it was me, you, Steven, <laughs> London. We were all like in a group. Yeah. And then you went off somewhere. I don't know where. And then... London and Steve was on one, they were at the gate, and I was walking towards the crowd, and I saw the crowd expand. When the crowd expand like that, it means either a fight happening or somebody got a tool. And I turned, I started running, Steve and London, like, what the hell are you running for? They heard pop, pop, they're like, oh. I remember, we just tossed my keys like it was a three by one relay. <laughs> my car is like all the way over, let's say this is the place, right? My car is here. Me, Steven, and London right here. Lloyd is all the way over here. Somehow, I don't know how he never outside of the field. Of I ran and jumped that fence so fast. Because right. <laughs> we was in a rodeo arena. Yeah. So I jammed, right, jumped over. right there in our meeting in Fresno. So I ran. Jumped over that arena. Bro, that shit was crazy. I remember hiding with some girl. Bro, I know, like I said, it, was, it felt like it took forever. I remember running and praying. I, that's the first time I ever spoke to God. Like, God spoke directly to yeah, me. That was... He said, as long as you keep running, you good. And then he I stopped. <laughs> he stopped and dude's like, stop running. He's like, no, 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 that, no, no. That was after that. that was, that's, oh. that's when I talked to God. I ran into somebody that might have had something on them. And they said, hey, slow down, slow down, slow down. So I looked in his face. He, they didn't really look like they were there too much. So I said, well, I'm not, finna, I'm not finna see what they trying to do. So I ducked under this car and ran. And God said, keep going. And I'll never forget that. Y'all y'all tried to blame me for that. I was yes, like. Tyler did set us up that night. I ain't said no. That was Steven who had the play. Everybody, everybody else that was a part of that story going to come on the, and, yeah, and we'll figure it out. But yeah. Bro, that was Steven's We ain't got to talk about it too much. You got to fight. But, it's, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. So like, yeah, that was a nice little pie tale for y'all. So yeah, man, I don't know how much you want to get into the rest of it, but you've done firefighting, a boxing. Well, you got to talk about the boxing. You got to oh, at least yeah. talk about the boxing. So let's start off boxing first. So <laughs> two hour episode. What happened was I was uh, at McMurray. This is when I first stopped playing football and I gained like hella weight. Like I went from 215, 220 to like 260. Yeah. Like, I was fat. Like you could see all my face because at this point I stopped playing football. I started going to morning weights. God was just focused on school. Got on the dean's list. You're doing good. Every day I would come back from class around 11. Mm -hmm. I'll eat f curly fries and honey mustard every day. For, and some chick chicken wings sometimes. See, the thing about football players is we eat a lot and we eat stupid, but we yeah. work out. So it balances out. So I you take that workout away. <laughs> Bro, I had curly fries that. and honey mustard every day. I didn't have to pay for meals either because I was cool with the lunch lady, her daughter. Her daughter worked the front gate. Yeah. They would swipe the cars. And the lunch lady, Miss Pam, Lord bless her soul. She used to hook up the omelets every morning. Oh, man. Bro. The omelets at college. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, so I would do that. I would watch A Different World. <laughs> I remember I finished specifically. That was your. Yes. That was your show. That was my show. <laughs> I remember I would watch a different world from eleven thirty yeah. all the way to like 
maybe two. Then I go to like my math lab, mm -hmm. come back, watch a different world or some <laughs> uh, UFC or something, right? Yeah. And so I had my realized I was gaining weight, and I was, I came across Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz, and uh, it was getting ready for the first fight. Yeah. And I was like, man, that looked kind of dope. Because uh -huh, so you tried UFC first, that's weird. Yeah, so I was like, I'm going I'm to try this out first. So I remember my second semester, I had to retake English because first semester I was, we liked the part and not. Just didn't go the way you yeah. wanted it to. So that's okay. Keep going. Keep so going. I wrote a paper about Conor McGregor and I was like, no, well, let me just do some more research. And I started uh, studying and realized he started fighting late. So I can do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, that summer I uh, got into the UFC gym and I was just, you know, working out, trying to try to get back in shape. Yeah, first and, and then foremost, yeah. That, I'll say that September, we had a smoker at the UFC gym in Pearland. That's where I first started, UFC gym in Pearland. And I met my boy, uh, Austin M.O. Williams. And I took some of his boxing classes. He like, hey, do the smoker. I did, and I hit this dude with a double leg takedown. Yeah, keep going. And I never forget, I was like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> it I felt like, right? It felt right, I was like, I can do this. So that whole time, all that sand my first year, I would drive back and forth like every weekend. I would drive back and forth every weekend just to go to the UFC gym. Yeah. And then I realized like money wise and like training wise, it wasn't like benef like benefiting me. So yeah, it was adding up. Yeah. So I saw I'm trying to find a gym in Huntsville. My homeboy Seven Ellis. He was uh he's like, there's a boxing gym out here. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go check it out. So I went to uh, talk to the guy, Kevin. And he was like, I don't do MMA, but you know, you wanna do boxing, you know, this place come. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I don't wanna get kicked in the head or knee. <laughs> so yeah, like, no, no. why not? I went to 116 boxing gym at the time and I sparred, uh, I forgot his name. But that was like my first week that I sparred him. And I was like, yeah. But so for some reason I like violence. So I was like, I can do this. I feel that. I mean football, it was uh, speed and violence. Shout out Coach yeah. Allison. Yeah. Four quarters of speed and violence. I get it. And so from there I met my uh my coach, Mike Hammer Hamilton. Uh, you know, R. P. And uh he uh he actually taught me boxing. Like I actually dropped a morning class. Yeah. I dropped the morning class just so I could go train with him in the morning. So I would go every Monday, no, Tuesday, Thursday morning, mm -hmm. I would go train with him. And it was like, it was if something I wanted and I needed. Yeah. And so he, like, he spoke to me, all gave me all the potential and all the wisdom I needed. So my first fight, it was in a small little arena, like bar, like size of your, size of the place. Yeah. When I say we were stacked up on top of each other, my coach, he it was so small, the building was so small, he missed the exit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he showed up to like maybe an hour after the fight happened. He's like, dog, I missed the exit, my bad. I was like, it's all good. I uh, lost the fight by split decision. But it was still cool. And after that, I just kept going. Mm -hmm. And then I came across uh, Juan Torres, who I started uh, help. I was just helping him sell tickets, training, sparring, wrapping hands. And that's why I actually started falling in love with the, the business part of boxing also. Like, I could do other stuff besides just fight. I could actually become a cut man, learn how to wrap hands, take care of cuts, yeah, yeah, how to yeah. sell tickets, how to, you know, make money off of it. And then I remember it was when bare knuckle fighting came big. We went to Cass, Wyoming, and that shit was amazing. You bare knuckle fight? I what? didn't bare knuckle fight. I went. Uh -oh. My I boy like, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my boy Juan. He had a fight in Wyoming, and uh, it was a pay per view fight. Yeah. And we went out there. That stuff was dope. I was like, yeah, like. Then that's, that's why I realized I could do, also be a boxer and also work on the business side, help promote fighters and fight. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's what I want to do. And now I'm here now. I had like a. I say two year layoff, you know, yeah. with life happening, got near death car accident, had a yeah. kid, you know, and then I joined the military. So mm -hmm. I walked my way to get back into it. I uh, started training camp a couple of weeks ago, you know, just trying to get my body right. Yeah, yeah. 
once I get back to my walk around, my good fighting walk around weight, and then yep. just uh, be hearing some news about a fight soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Drop that uh, Instagram what they should follow to keep up with your box and stuff. Uh, Tyler, T Y L E R, Hammer, H A M M A, Davis, D A V I S. It's on all social media platforms from Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Yep, yep. Links will be in the bio. Um, something while you were talking about that, <clears throat> I was thinking about, I, I, I didn't, I was being lazy and not learning how to like wrap my hands. Uh, oh. Tyler used to, I used to go like, uh, do like his classes when he was teaching boxing. And you were teaching boxing. Yeah, title. Yeah. So you, uh, since my whole entirety, uh, entire time of knowing you, you've always been like, and that's why I kept you around. You're always, you're always motivational. Like you, you, you're motivational yeah. and you like to push and you like to help yeah. people. Like, I don't know what you get out of it, but it's that's fun. just it's something like, you do. I think it's the feeling of helping people, like for them to reach a goal. Like my boy Chris, he just had his pro debut a couple weeks ago in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. He won by knockout, body shot. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he first started, he was a student at Sound. And like, he's a tall Filipino. I call it my Filipino brother. Yeah. And like, I remember he was like, he would, where I first started boxing, where he was. And Hammer noticed that. It's like, hey, that's gonna be your mentee. Mm -hmm. You're gonna mentor him, make sure he's right. Yeah. And when he finished school, and sometimes he would come home to Rosenberg. I was like, hey, I got you a job at Title for the summer. Come work out. You could literally train all day and teach boxing. Exactly, yeah. And we did that. And hey, he has skyrocketed past me so far. Yeah. And I'm proud of him for that because, like, to see where he first started to now is like, it's crazy. Yeah, no. Just... But no, I get a, I get a kick and a, like a wonderful feel in my heart to see people that I help, like, be where they want to be, become who they want to become. Yeah, no, no, that's that's a great quality to have. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I, like, good. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's really good. I don't, I don't know what the, it did, that is what it is. I think that's why coaching is, like, somewhere up there for me. Yeah, that's, that's what's up. So even just, like, I mean, with having a son now, I mean, uh, you, you post, like, you know, showing him how to do different things and really working with him, getting his, yeah. right now, he's, I guess he's getting his motor skills up, but at the no, same I time. his motor skills been there, he just. But at the same <laughs> time, like, still teaching him, like, fundamentals and how to do different things and uh, yeah. really develop, like, really working with him. I don't know. Okay, he loves the box. That's yeah, all we do. We watch about. boxing and uh, mixed martial arts. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's, that, all that's gonna, just gonna pay out later, I mean. I feel like with confidence and I mean, he'll be able to actually do it and technique and form and things aren't going to be new to him as no. it is going to be new to kids that, you know, who parents are just going to, first of all, who, who are going to just send their kids off for somebody else to, you know, develop them, which is no, no problem with that. But if Not you, could, at all. you could do it yourself, like, you know, at least, uh, you know, if he, he, he know he could come to you, that's always a good. I think more I want to teach like. him how to box instead of just coach because there's not a lot of teachers out there. Yeah. Yeah. Because that boy right there, he got the aggressive side down. You just got to teach him how to control his aggression. Yeah. Because yeah. right now, he'll run to a wall if you let him. <laughs> I'm not joking. Give it that he is, too. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's not really, I feel like it's not really like an excuse. It's like, you know, as soon as you can do yeah. Cause what like, you need to do, do it. A lot of people don't know, like, when I was sweeping at my mom's place the other day, he grabbed the broom right after me and started sweeping. It's like, you know how to sweep? Like, yeah, he got his own little play mop and uh, broom at the house. Yeah. Yeah, boy, and I had to clean up. When we say it's clean up time, he grabbed his toys, put in the toy box. Like, hey, if you got kids, they're looking for you. They know, they know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. They watch you enough times to see, oh, this is what clean up means. Mm -hmm. I got to do this. They, exactly, they know exactly what they got to do. What do you get resistance uh, from him with outside of maybe just regular baby stuff? Or not baby stuff, mm. toddler stuff? Or you, yeah, I guess that plays a factor. I don't know, really. It's just sometimes he don't want to take a nap. He, he always want to be around and knowing what's going on. Like, now that we're in town visiting my mom and stuff, the other day we went to the rodeo. Yeah. My wife, my sister, and her boyfriend. My mom was like, here, I'm going to put him down for his nap time. You got to sneak out there in his nap time. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. He's like, where's mom and dad at? I'm like, dog, 
He, he, he needs to know. <laughs> we gotta have our own grown up, grown ups time. But he definitely like stays around y'all. Oh yeah, most of the time. I mean, he's with y'all all the time because twenty four seven pretty yeah. much. So. My wife, she works from home right now, <laughs> so he always around her. Then we uh we got a daycare we send to in uh Norfolk when we out there. Yeah, he goes to, like in the evening time just to uh, be around the kids and learn. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, one of the last questions I, or last topics I wanted to uh, touch on was under, you're in the Navy now. Mm -hmm. So, but you, I would say, I guess most people when you are in high school, you hear of, you know, students going straight from high school to either like ROTC, ROTC program in college to be mm -hmm. an officer or just going straight to military. But you like, you know, you did other things and then, you know, whatever, whatever. And then you went to the mil mil Navy, I would say, later coming from the perspective of like a high schooler and this is what i try to do like show high school it's like you can do whatever whatever yeah. whenever or you know within the limit limits so how was it going in later like i said from a high school perspective so i'm sure you were with people that were of all oh. ages and this that and the other how did that feel going so in? i could tell you the difference between someone who came straight out of high school versus someone who actually worked and then people who went to college and then went to the military yeah so the high schooler, they don't know how to deal with other people. They treat everything like it's still high school. They want to be this, be that, be known for all this and that. And really, it's pointless. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the college, the college military person, sometimes they act like the high schooler, but they're a little bit more mature. Mm -hmm. And most of those times, they end up being your officers. And some officers who come straight from college, they don't get a lot of respect. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, because 21, they don't. <laughs> 22. Yeah, and I mean, granted, they earned that because they got that degree. They did ROTC. Yeah. But they didn't like putting the work like the Mustangs. Mustangs, I know each branch have, I know like the Navy, we have Mustangs. Mustangs, like prior enlisted, like they were an E1, mm -hmm. worked their way up all the way to be an officer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they get a lot of respect and pull because they were actually at the bottom of the bottom and mm -hmm. they worked their way up to there They've versus there. someone who went to college, ROTC, and then became an officer. You yeah, know? without being there. But I would say this, the people who joined the military and had working experience like two or three years before they joined the military are the best ones because like one, we know how to talk to people. Two, we don't put with bullshit. Three, we, we get the work done. And four, like, we know how to deal with everybody. Yeah. So we know how to deal with the uh, high schoolers, the officers, the people who were uh, enlisted way before, who never decided to become an officer but became a chief or something. Yeah, yeah. We interact with everybody. Like one of my closest friends, I had to say, is a chief, my mm -hmm. chief. And we talk about everything from cars, women, money, what we're going to do outside the Navy, you know, the, our likes, dislikes in the Navy. Cool dude. Yeah, yeah. But I will say this. But any high schooler who wants to join the military, after you graduate high school, take a year or two to figure out, one, do you really want to join the military? And two, uh, work in another job field. Like, if you go be a volunteer firefighter or you want to work at a gas station or warehouse, whatever, get some real world job experience before you join the military because join the military straight out of high school you can you could talk to anybody crazy and you can't because you go learn the hard way that a lot of people don't deal with disrespect the way people in high school deal with disrespect yeah and some more I, some more tips don't take the first job they give you they don't your recruiters don't tell you this and your recruiters should be fired because they are really horrible people but when you first go take the ASVAB, you have a year from that day to uh, join. You can retake it again, you know, get a higher score. Mm -hmm. Or if there's a job you want and they don't have it available at that time, and they say, oh, you got to pick a job today, you don't have to. You can come back the next day and pick another job. Or weeks later, pick another job. Because your ASVAB score is going to stay there. It's valid for a year. You don't have to pick a job at that point because at that point, they're forcing you to do whatever they need so they can meet a quota. Don't let the military work you, you work the military. Find out what you wanna do, find out how it can help you. Like my rate, I work as a ABH right now. 
and my undesignated airman. And I strike in April. And ABH, I can get a lot of firefighter qualifications okay, okay. once I get out. So, like, they have a shore duty in Texas. I could go, I could come out as a fire marshal. Okay. So I was like, why not? Yeah. Fire marshal, fire chief, fire inspector. Figure out what you want to do outside of the military also. If you want to do 20 years, cool. A lot of people don't want to do 20 years. But if you want to do 20 years, figure out what you want to do when you're 40. Because mm -hmm. you still got another lifespan after that. Yeah. If you want to do six, eight, hell, even ten, map out from that day what you want to do. So if you want to become a teacher or whatever, as soon as you're in there, start taking classes. Go to college. They'll pay for your college. You use TA, tuition assistance. You could take up to 12 credits a year or a semester, and you could use that and slowly get your degree. Yeah. And also look at your eval. All right. Yeah. All right. That's good advice. Hope you all learned something, took, from, from, took something from that. I think a big point you said was, you know, you coming on, coming in high school or out of high school, you're kind of narrow minded. You know, yeah. definitely think about, have a lot of intention in what you want to do. And uh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right. Yeah. No, any uh, final things you need the people to know? Anything you need to ask me? Anything? Uh, uh, don't have to be none. Uh, no. Nah. I think we covered, we covered a good amount today. Like I said, appreciate you pulling up today. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, mean, I had to stop by, you know, I've been watching from afar and supporting, so I decided no, I, I gotta come show my face. Yeah, Tyler definitely hashtag Pytel's fam before coming on the show because yeah. he's definitely showing a lot of support. You know, uh, that's what keeps it going. You know, people keep keep me going, so. And make yeah. sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. My man's show. Yes. He's working really hard trying to get out the mud. We're trying yes. to get him some some paid sponsorships out here. Yes, we need all the money. We need to keep going. We need to keep spotlighting people like Tyler that can give y'all some good game as, long as, as well as life experience and this, that, and the other. So yeah, appreciate you pulling up. This has been an episode of Pie Tales. Uh, yeah, like you said, like, subscribe, comment, share. One more thing. Not all game is good game. Not all free game is good game. Good job, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> we out. Cut the tape that was the intro. Yeah. This is history. <laughs>